Hello everyone, I'm Rohit and this is the new series I'm going to start called Integration Hub. In this Integration Hub, uh, we are going to discuss about that how to activate the Integration Hub, what are the steps required for Integration Hub and then there are a lot of out-of-box scope we are going to discuss in our upcoming session. Today's sessions we are going to discuss that how we can activate the Integration Hub and then we'll discuss about the, what are the requirements we needed to integrate any third-party system. My recommendation is that if you have not watched my complete series about Flow Designer, please go and watch the flow design because this is directly related to the flow designer. So my recommendation go and watch the flow designer. So first, let's understand what is the integration hub. So integration hub is a mechanism or you can say the technique that we are going to use in our flow designer. And then with the help of this uh, integration hub, we are going to connect with the service now to any of this third party like Google or maybe um, you know Amazon or Zoom any of the third party we are going to connect with very minimum low code that we are going to use that. How to activate the integration hub before we talk about the how to activate the integration hub you should know that integration hub is a chargeable thing so it's have cost so if you are trying to use the integration hub for your organization go and talk your SME because this is chargeable component depending on that your uses and then what type of things you are going to use the service now is going to be charged based on that so before you are going to activate that integration hub or you are going to use the integration hub talk to your sme next thing is that how you can activate this integration hub in your customer environment to activate the customer environment you have to visit the support.servicenow.com and there you need to put your corporate login username and password and then there you need to create a request for activating that uh, integration hub but for the practice purpose you can activate the integration hub as well as in your pda environment so i'll show you that how you can uh, activate that integration hub in your pda environment before we go to the service now screen let's talk about that what is spoke so spoke is like a package you can see the package in this package there are a lot of out of box activity will be came up you can use this out of box activity depending on your requirement you don't need to uh, build custom things you just need to be use those custom spoke or custom uh, actions in your flow designer so spoke, spoke is nothing but a package we call that jira spoke we call that zoom spoke we are going to install those spokes uh, in our earlier video but in uh, in a high level spoke is like a package that will come lot of activity for particular uh, application so the package may be jira spoke maybe zoom spoke so depending on that which spoke you are installing uh, once you install this spoke you can use those uh, actions there in our flow designer let's go to the next slide the, before we integrate that one system to the another system, let's say that I'm going to integrate one system to the another system. First, we need to we know that a uh, few things before we are integrating uh, between one system to the another system. So as we know, the integration could be real time or integration could be, uh, you know, time uh, periodically, like um, after certain time, you can do that integration, right? So before you integrate that, you should know that why you are doing the integration. Let's take example for the Jira. Using the Jira integration, what we can do, we can actually send our story, we can send our AP defect, all this information from service now to Jira instance, right? So from the service now, we can send the Jira instance, the story information, we can pass that, right? Similarly, when you are trying to integrate any of this application, you should know that why you are integrating that. Next point, you should remember that what is the trigger point? So trigger point is a component that we should know that maybe whenever the story is going to be created, that time we are going to send from service now to the Jira or maybe whenever the story is going to be updated, then that time I want to send that or maybe whenever the story is deleted or maybe story is assigned, depending on that, it can be triggered, right? So we should first know that what is the trigger point or which point I should trigger the integration. It could be uh, you know, sending the data or uh, receiving the data, but you should know that when should be triggered. Next thing we should know that what is the type of integration? It is inbound or outbound. So if we are sending the data from service now to the Jira system or any of this third party, we call that call outbound. Okay. But if you are receiving any data, let's say the Jira is sending some data and you are receiving and processing, maybe you are creating in, uh, a story or incident that we call the inbound. So you should know that what we are doing inbound or outbound or both. So both we call the bidirectional. So bidirectional means that we can send the data and we can receive the data. So next thing is that endpoint. So let's say that you have a service now instance and then from the service now instance, you are going to send the data to the Jira instance, right? 
So there could be a n number of Jira instance or subdomain instance. You need to be sent the data on a specific Jira instance that we call the endpoint or we can say that URL. So we need exact URL where we are going to send the data that we call the endpoint. Next is the credential. Credential is nothing but to log in a system we should use the username password. So for the integration we have a various type of credential. One is the API key, one is the basic and the last one is the OAuth. So we'll discuss this topic later. Uh, this is a little bit complicated but we'll discuss this later. But for the remember that uh, let's say that you are uh, let's say that you are logged into a particular service the user uh, uh, instance you need a username and password right similarly to integrate that from one instance to the another instance we need a credential either it could be a form of api key it could be form of the basic authentication or OAuth authentication the next is the request type so whenever you are going to send or whenever you are going to get the data or whenever you are going to do something there should be a request type okay so if you are sending some data uh, and creating something that could be post if you are getting some data that could be get and if you are updating some data that could be a put so there could be a various type of request type we should understand the request type and we should use that then there is a request body so request body is normally came up with the json format so it could be a different format also but normally for uh, standard and uh, current procedure we use a json format uh, in a request body that we are going to use from one instance to the another instance so let's say that i want to create a story with the story number 001 with the short description is test that all will come to under json or on call the request body but let's say that you want to get some data from service now instance to the jira instance let's say that i want to get all the story information that we can use that active jira story then we can use that in a query parameter we can say that active equal to true so that it can return all the active jira story number that we call query parameter so for getting something or when we are using the get method we will use the query parameter when we are going to use the post or put method we are going to use the request body these terms may be a little odd but we are going to actually practically implement all these stuffs. then once we integrate that once we connect and we are sent the data or receive the data we'll get a response we'll get a response like uh, uh successfully created or maybe this is these are the incident or this other story number that will get as a response body like in a json format or maybe xml format normally standardly we are using the json format then we'll get a response code. Each code have a different different meaning. So normally 200 means that connection established. 201 means that uh, request created. Uh, you know 404 means that connection did not uh, establish. So these are the standard response code we have for this integration, and that denote that what happens we can know understand that. Then we have uh, one more thing called read and build documentation. So let's say that you are going to connect a Jira instance, right? So you are going to uh, connect a Jira instance or Google Drive. You can go through this Google Drive documentation and then you can understand that what are the steps you require. You don't need to go and check uh, the technician team or Google technician team like how we can connect that, what is the endpoint, what is the credential, what is the request type. Everything will be documented somewhere. You can uh, go and understand the documentation and then you can start using that. So similarly, once you build your, uh, you know, your integration things so that somebody can uh, use your integration also for that, you should also build a good documentation so that third party can uh, read your documentation and they can connect that they don't need to unnecessary they don't, don't need to reach back to you they can just go through this documentation and then they can successfully able to connect that your instance so these are the requirement specification we need whenever we are connecting from one instance to the another instance normally if you go for the interview they ask that what are the steps required for integrating one instance to the another in uh, instance so to integrate any of this instance, for, uh, let's say the service now or Jira or maybe for uh, Slack or maybe Zoom, any of this in, um, you know, instance, you need these are the information first, then you should start coding or start uh, actually go to the technical thing. If these things are not available, then you should, uh, I mean, you are not able to complete your integration, you should be dependent on other team. So first gather this information and then start coding or start implementing in a technical part. Now, lastly, I'll show you that how you can activate that integration hub in your personal developer instance. For that, let's go back to the developers.servicenow.com and I'll show you that how we can activate that. 
So this is the developers.servicenow.com and if you see the right side beside in your uh, name you can click that and then there is an option called activate plugin. You can click that activate plugin and then search for that integration hub plugin. So you can search that integration hub. So the moment you search the integration hub you can see the four integration plugins are available. The first thing is the integration hub installer is the very basic integration hub uh, which uh, give you that very basic component. This is the very basic one and then this is the top uh, most uh, packages which have that lot of out of box spokes are available. So uh, depending on your use case you can install this uh, basic or the advanced one uh, but uh, each package have a different different spoke you can see this is the uh, Azure Microsoft AD spoke JDBC spoke so different remember one thing this is completely free of cost for your developers.servicenow.com you can install and then play around that there is no cost for that but for customer environment there is some charges talk to your SME before implementing or uh, do something in your customer environment so that's it for today if you have any question let me know in my comment section thank you very much have a great day